All right, let's get to it. To meet him, here's Michael Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated in association with the undisputed, undefeated king of beer, Budweiser presents this featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, Chairman Howard E. McCall, Executive Director Greg Serb. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system, Mercedes Medina, Tommy Reed, and Bill Nealon. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Paul Steinberg, Dr. Louis Van de Beek, and the timekeeper for this bout is Tony Stenza. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the famous Philadelphia Blue Horizon, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing. This is in the middleweight division. The referee for this contest is Hurley McCall. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black and white trunks and weighing 162 pounds. He's from the Bronx in New York City. His professional record, 16 victories against three defeats and one draw, five KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis the Magician Milton. And across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent wearing the black and gold and weighing 161 pounds from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, North Philly to be exact. He brings a professional record of 15 and 1 with 12 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, Bernard Executioner Hopkins. All right, gentlemen, you were giving your instructions earlier. I want you to make my plans at all times. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Look at him, baby. Look at him. You may crush him. Look at him, baby. Gentlemen, touch gloves. Look at him, baby. Oh boy. Excellent stairs. Very good. Ooh. Nice lean by Milton. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, you catch a glimpse of, stepping out of the ring, who has really done very, very well as a trainer. He's an excellent trainer. And uh, Dennis Milton, lucky to have him in his corner. He's giving him last minute pep talk as Bowie Fisher is giving to Bernard Hopkins. I have to tell you something. The atmosphere is charged here tonight. Yeah, what it really is. In fact, Hopkins said this morning, he said, this is like fighting for a title. He feels it. So does Milton. And when you can get in this building with these fans and the opening act we just had, I'll tell you. Bernard Hopkins just looks like a puncher, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. He really is out of the mold of some of the great fighters here in Philadelphia. And I tell you, it goes back a long way. You, 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 saw, those, uh, you saw those numbers. A hook already has Milton Reeling back. He is in trouble. This, and he this, holds on. This looks a little like the Jackson fight so far, I have to say. Well, you said bomb, then bang, and that's yeah. what you meant. He's going right after him. I, I will say this, Dennis Milton's outfit is a very classy outfit. Yes, it is. Those of you watching in black and white, that is black <laughs> and white. Yes. And Dennis Milton is fighting a fight here that, in truth, is courting disaster. I mean, he is mixing it up with Hopkins, and I am not sure. Oh, boy, he's putting his head in there, too. I don't think it was a nice shot. That is a knockdown. That was a right hand. Milton's not hurt, I don't believe, but he went down right now. Well, so far, it's looking a lot like the Julian Jackson fight. Yeah, actually, Milton may be hurt. I'm on a lie. He's holding on like he's hurt. Yes, he is. And he's got a long way to go to get through this first round. Hopkins really all business, isn't he? He really is. Dennis Milton said to us today, I'm going to win. Oh, good right by Milton. He said, I'm going to win. The boy so far does not look confident. And he looks like he's one punch away from getting whacked out of here. He yeah, really he, does, does. he still seems to be doing everything wrong right now. He just does not settle into this fight at all. <laughs> he's getting in there and breaking these two. Five seconds left in the round. And of course, there is a three knockdown rule. So if Bernard Hopkins can get him down by hook or crook any way, he's got this match. And now he'll jump on him, I'm sure. Well, that's a tackle by Dennis Milton. Look at the, the poise by Hopkins, though. He 
is not falling for anything. He is just saying, I'm going to get my job done here. And the right hand drove oh. Milton into the ropes. So he holds on. He's just trying to get through this. Dennis Milton is making this a very ugly fight. The referee, in his defense, is trying very hard to keep it in control. It's not easy. Because Hopkins wants that third knockdown, but he probably won't get it. Well, there's a good right hand. And it rocked Milton at the bell. And I don't know if there are enough words for Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. No. This man may need a whip a gun and a chair to stay in this fight. He already, 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 Okay. Look at the no first problem. knockdown, which at the moment could have been a flash knockdown, and hard to tell if he would have been hurt. Really, it just bounced off the top of his head, so I don't know that he was hurt that badly. But the second knockdown carried with it a little more authority. But you know what? Uh-uh. -uh. That was more of a push. Really was, but yet when Milton got up, he seemed not to have all his legs. Now this this stuff was real. <laughs> this was, these were some punches that. Hopkins landed. That was a good right hand. Right at the end of the round. So we start the second round. Milton starts it the same way. He's trying to go after Hopkins. He's getting wobbled by everything that lands. And wow. you can see Hopkins just took everything away from Milton. Well, Dennis Milton, we need to report to you, has been a middleweight contender, beat Robbie Sims. This is not a man who comes in with absolutely no credentials, but as we told you, was really whacked out early against Julian Jackson. And the question tonight would be, what did he have, does he have left? So far, it's not too much. And his career really pretty much on the line. Another bad knockout loss could put him permanently into the uh, category of all-star Yeah, he had that great end of 1989. As you said, he beat Robbie Sims. Then he beat Michael Lajadeh in a hotly disputed game. Yes. But nevertheless, it was still a good performance. That's right, they had a review of that fight. Yeah, actually. I believe they reversed it on his behalf. Hopkins setting up the right hand very well with the jab. Yes, he really is. He came right behind the jab with the right hand. You know, you know what's interesting? If you look at Bernard Hopkins and you look at Julian Jackson, their styles, their build, everything about them is very similar. Milton must feel like he's reliving a nightmare. Oh, big left hand. Body shot to left hand. Well, there's that double left hook that's so effective in boxing fusion. Face the level of competition that Milton has overall in his career. But he was ready to take this step, and right now he's taking it in grand fashion. Yeah, he's the one that looks like the experienced boxer. Big cut over the left eye of Milton. Real big cut. And we don't know if that came from a clash of heads, but we didn't see any, any denotation of that by the referee. It is above the left eye on the brow of the eye. Could be a big problem for Milton. Oh, there was a headbutt right there. Well, they're banging heads a little bit, but certainly there have been enough legal punches landed by Hopkins that could have landed, could open that cut. And I'll tell you, most he's been Milton using his head, so yeah, if Milton. there was a clash of heads, he has no one to blame but himself. He's been fighting completely out of control. Gentlemen, you're not jabbing? You're not jabbing. Eddie Aliano, the cut man in the corner of... Dennis, I need you jabbing, baby. Look at that blade. I need you jabbing, baby. You're not jabbing, Dennis. Okay. All right? Okay. I need you jabbing. Let the doctor look at it. Okay. It's above the eye. It's cool. It's above the eye. I still want him to look at it. It's above the look eye. At look at it. D, I need you jabbing, baby. It may have been a clash of heads that opened that cut. 
Well, I'll bet that was it. That would be a purely accidental clash of heads. I don't know if the referee... De yeah, there it is. Whether the referee denoted that, I don't know. And you see the blood. Now, the referee was over-talking as we look at it again from another angle. Yeah, when he hit him, the, the blood started spurting. Now, the referee was over-talking to the officials. He may have said it was a clash of heads. Yeah, I didn't see what the referee was saying, but he was talking. And that cut is still bleeding. It's going to take a couple of rounds for Eddie Aliano. And I'm not sure if Milton has that. You can see the numbers after the first two rounds. Boy, strong edge for Hopkins. That is something he does quite well. Nice left hand again. You can see the strength of Hopkins. He sets down on his punches so nicely. He's a very compact puncher also. That would hurt Milton. Very hurt right now. And a big right hand. And Milton tries to hold on again. Almost a full takedown. He is holding on for dear life. And there you see the blood. We're attempting to find out now whether the... Uh, Commission has ruled that a clash of heads if the referee you ruled that, although that may be academic. I was just going to say it could be a moot point. Hopkins is, that, is that the great, same as academic. It's very similar. Okay, good. I just want to make sure we're in sync here. Nice right by Dennis Milton. So he's still firing a little bit, but not being very effective. times have we seen a fighter like Dennis Milton who loses a big fight as he did to Julian Jackson all of a sudden just not go back yeah. to what brought him absolutely you know he was cons really was a pretty decent boxer before this I think that loss just took so much out of him and then all of a sudden your macho starts to surface and, you and you're put in there against a guy who's just about as tough Bernard Hopkins is almost as tough as Julian Jackson. Maybe he is as good. Who knows? He, he would hope like to think so. Whatever the case, he's cut for the same mold. And certainly Julian Jackson's a terrific puncher. It was ruled an accidental headbutt, incidentally. Okay. And they would go to the cards after three rounds if that caused the, the, the bout to be stopped. Well, Bernard, it's target practice now for Bernard Hopkins. Tremendous body work by Hopkins. And he shows a good jab. He shows good power in the right hand. There was a good right hand. And to the third round, this has been all Bernard Hopkins. Well, this man has a long way to go to get back. And I'm not sure he's capable of that trip. Landed only eight punches in the third round to go with three in the first and six in the second. That will not get it done, will it? Especially not against Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins just looking very, very good. Two weeks in a row now on top rank boxing, we have seen somebody who you really have to consider a bright prospect. Last week, Cecilio Espino against Luigi Computero Espino. We had not seen him on top rank boxing. He had fought most of his matches out west at the form. Just brilliant. And Hopkins, even though we've seen him once before, this is even a better version of Bernard Hopkins. It's interesting, too, you know, you talk to fighters the morning of the fight, and you get a pretty good idea of where they're really coming from just to, by how the conversation goes. And you really get the idea of talking to Bernard Hopkins. This is a consummate professional. This is a guy who wants to be champion and is willing to, to pay the price to be a champion. He was very focused. He's a very articulate young man, and he knows exactly what he wants to do. Talking about his training camp up at Split Rock in the Poconos, which ironically is not far from Deer Lake, where Muhammad Ali had his training camp. And we know from what Steve Little did in that first match that they were serious up there training. He and Bowie Fisher trained both young, both men. They worked hard up there getting ready for these matches. Dennis Milton could easily have a point taken away pretty soon for holding. 
but I, that too would probably be academic. They'll look at that cut. Now, if it was ruled a clash of heads, so if they would stop this box, it doesn't, but they should go to the scorecards, which would certainly favor Hopkins. Oh, no, it's a, it's a, it's a point being Yes, yeah, so he did take a point away. That's... Looks like Dennis Milton needs another problem. Right? Yeah, he's got enough. Let's see, he's been knocked down. He's got a bad cut. Now he's got a point taken away. I think you might forget about a decision win for Milton. Only the... Oh, oh good right yeah. hand. Right hand. Only the Buffalo Bills can uh, sympathize with them. <laughs> well, that cut is much worse. Yeah, and the referee's got his hands full here. This is a match is very tough to keep control of. Good body work by Hopkins. Are you impressed with the poise of Bernard Hopkins? Yeah, I really am, and his patience. No reason to get wild and do things that would lead him into. And he told us this place, I know Dennis Milton's not a big puncher, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stick my chin out and say, you know, hit me and let's see if I can take it. And Milton again, they're going to get this fight stopped. Milton is going to. Yeah, he might be disqualified pretty soon. And that's what the referee's telling him. Dennis Milton looks just out of it right now. Yeah, he really does. Into the fourth round of what has been an ugly fight, and it's no fault of Bernard Hopkins who has done everything. Well, between rounds, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad stepped into the ring, went over to the referee, said, that's enough. And a fight that is well stopped. Uh, Dennis Milton was going to win this fight if they fought 50 rounds. Bernard Hopkins looking to all four corners of uh, the ring here in the Blue Horizons, a place he knows well, fans he knows well. And it was an excellent performance. Yes, Dennis Milton has slipped back considerably. But this young man, Bernard Hopkins, shows you why he is thought of as a prime candidate to fight for the middleweight championship. Yeah, very impressive performance for him. And he jumped on him right now. His patience was very good. Let's get the official word from Michael Buffer. Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Hurley McCall stops this vice at the uh, stop this bout at the advice and the urging of Dennis Milton's corner. The official time, the end of the fourth round. The winner by TKO. His record now 16 and 1, 13 KOs from North Philadelphia. And our executioner Hopkins. Well, you heard him say he was 16 and 1. That one came in his very first fight. Then he took a year and a half off, and ever since that time, he has been all business. Bernard Hopkins, the winner. We'll talk to him after this. At 11 o'clock. Meanwhile, here's a guy who uh, has nothing but good things to look forward to, and he's with Al Bernstein. Al? Bernard Hopkins, who said before, I'm going to be world champion, and I mean what I say. And you know what? There's no braggadocia there. We said it earlier. This young man who knows where he wants to go. Wonderful performance. Uh, you're just looking better and better. Yes, um, Sal. I'd like to thank God for this victory. And I like to say that I like to thank Split Rock up in yeah. the Poconos for getting in this tremendous shape. And yes, uh, Bernstein, I, I'm, my goal is focused on being a middleweight champion. I ain't predicting no time. The public and my managers will sit down and deal with that. But I come in a tremendous shape. I respected Dennis Milton, even the people that he beat as an amateur. Yeah. Like I said, this separate the boys from the men. Amateurs was a different thing. Uh, Mike Tyson lost a lot of fights in the amateurs, but now he, he was unstoppable. And I, I, I'm, I'm basically working with the good... Uh, Good working with uh, Prince Charles, and mm -hmm. I was in the camp with David Tiberi, which yeah. I wish him the luck with James Tony, because if he don't get it, I will soon later. Well, I was gonna say, which of the would you like to see Tony maybe in the next with the next year or so? In the next year and a half, uh, Al, I would like to see Tony. I would like to see McCullum if he don't yeah. grow old enough. And there's a lot of other middleweights out there. You got you have a lot of guys that we don't know about as much in the good middleweights. You got uh, Tate. Uh, you got a lot of uh, good fighters out there that. I might have to climb up that, that, that scale. And it's nothing but a learning test. This was the first guy that I fought that had experience yeah. and that also can box. But I can box and punch. I, I, was, I, was, I watched a lot of Sugar Ray Robinson tapes, and I, call, I, I consider myself as a Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Robinson Let me tell you Robinson something, connection. You showed a lot of skills on both ends tonight. Congratulations. Thanks, Al. All right, Bernard Hopkins invoking the names of some right, greats, and he hopes, he hopes that someday his name will be mentioned with those greats, and that's possible. Let's go back to Barry Tompkins now at ringside. All right, thanks very much, Al. A convincing victory for Bernard Hopkins. You're going to see a lot more of that young man. When we come back to the Blue Horizon, uh, kind of a blast from the past, the fight that took place just a few weeks ago between Asif Dar and Tony Marshall after this.